Hello there, kitties. I'm Carrie, the vacuum tube witch. And I've got this purse supply that I showed you in the project overview. Let's turn it down and modify it so that it serves the glorious purpose of world domination and conquest by Caritech Electronics. Let's get to the bench. So, I've got this power supply. I'm gonna take it apart. A bunch of screws or bolts. Maybe add the lamp. By the way, I replaced um, the bunch lighting with something like uh, 6500 uh, Kelvins. But uh, I'm still keeping this, um, this lamp. So, what do we have here? Pretty nice, this is an output socket, a potentiometer or real stat, then the power switch, and of course a transformer and a full bridge rectifier here on a nice printed circuit board. And we don't need all that crap. We don't need it anymore. There is some, uh, some crap uh, underneath that. Gonna take it apart. Don't need the real stat, don't need the the transformer. So it will all have to go. And I think I will be taking out uh, all the parts temporarily so that I can do a nice clean job on the on the panel. That was left handed. Maybe zoom on in to get a closer look at what I'm doing here. One moment, please. Yeah, that about should do it. This I will remove now. By the way, I think I wouldn't be myself if I didn't do a little reverse engineering on this thing just to preserve uh, what it was, preserve the idea so as I'm discombobulating this device I will also draw a little schematic of what's inside. Gotta remove the knob. Uh, 
Remove the output socket as it's coming into Y. And there's an electrolytic cap uh, added over here. Probably by me. One more screw. And it's all going. This is also the thing I will want to change. Getting rid of the, the power cord. Replacing it with an IEC C13 uh, power socket. So, here, at the output of uh, of the main transformer, we've got a fuel bridge uh, rectifier. Pretty straightforward. Then the full bridge uh, rectifier cathodes go to the fuse, and from the fuse uh, they go to the rheostat, uh, 50 ohms uh, rheostat. And I will reverse engineer what's going on on this real start. Let me grab a piece of paper. That's yeah, pretty simple. That's pretty simple. One of the end goes to the output socket. This also goes to the output socket. This goes from the fuse, the electrolytic capacitor. Then the resistor in parallel, and uh, there's also the resistor to the negative, and this goes to the output socket. This is 50 ohms, 2.5 watt. The upper resistor is uh, 30 ohms and the bottom resistor would be 10 ohms. So basically what we have here, let's simplify it just a teeny tiny bit. Then the transformer. The full bridge rectifier. The filter cap. Uh, <coughs> probably I added it uh, at some point when I got this device. the bottom resistor and the 
the top resistor and the output socket. Ta-da! Pretty simple. Just some uh, voltage and current uh, regulation here. Nothing too fancy schmancy. Uh, there's gonna be a little bit of a problem here because uh, there's all sorts of uh, hardware spot welded on the enclosure. Uh, but I guess that uh, this can all be separated. The main cable is no more, but then the first thing I would like to check is whether this transformer is gonna fit in in the device at all. It's all attached uh, to the, the top part, uh, rather than the bottom part. Here is the interesting thing. And I will probably have some of those uh, IEC C13 uh, sockets uh, stashed somewhere in my lab. This might not be the way I want to do it. May also take a little modification on the on the socket itself. Let me look for a, a matching socket. I think I'm gonna have some of those stashed somewhere in, in those uh, boxes of parts. <laughs> Looks like we are quite lucky. I wouldn't think it would be so quick. Try finding a better one. I will also need one for the dirty dozen project, so I'd better pull it out uh, when I can. And then the GBIZ uh, fuse holder will also be useful for the dirty dozen. So I've got the socket and not a very good uh, thing because uh, the distance between the holes is wider than uh, what I have here. And I will still have to remove some metal from this edge. I'm wondering what I can do with uh, with those holes. Maybe I should just uh, widen the holes on the 
socket side. Let me try. Should have a milling cutter somewhere here. That's the one. And let's try using this uh, trusty little Bosch uh, that I converted to a corded drill. 12 volts DC corded drill. That would be one side. Let's check it. Still a teeny tiny bit more and to the to the bottom side. And that about should do it. Yeah, pretty nice. And let's do the other side. Not bad. Definitely not bad. Let's check with the screws. I also need some washers underneath them. A little bit of a problem, but... Uh, what would a Jedi Knight do? Use the Force!
Oh, come on. Looks like I need to cut it some more. Or just ditch the washers or cut them. Uh, cut them on one side. So that I still have the washers uh, holding the, the socket but uh, they don't move uh, then the screw they don't move um, then the socket uh, too far away should do the job pretty nicely Scrape some bars of the socket on the other end. And try now. Get in there, get in there. So the power socket is attached. It's not perfect, but it's pretty nice. Wonder if I can connect a power cable without any modifications. If I can find one. It's kind of interesting. Like uh, every time you need uh, a power cable it's not around. Ha! Huh. Found your pesky little bugger and just look how nicely it goes in. Not a problem at all. 
none of that uh, metal working rubbish needed to get it to work. Okay, so let's get a move on with the panel and uh, the fuse holder. The fuse holder has a hex knot. I will unscrew it uh, if I can. I'd rather get some uh, long nose pliers. up very nicely so now it's time for a rag and some WD-40 the, the space stuff <laughs> space technology at your disposal let's clean this The metal part of the enclosure is rattling. Yeah, the dirt is coming off. <laughs> Takes a little bit of work. Let's see if uh, isopropyl alcohol is gonna be better at that. I might ruin my nails with that, but look at how I how easy it is with isopropyl alcohol. Oh, the dirt comes off really nicely. the device is becoming a thing of beauty again. <laughs> Here's where I would like to fit a LED. But for this one I will have to use some washers. Uh, let's grab a bunch of uh, M5 washers and see if they are any good for the job. If not, I will do with uh, M6. like I gotta restock on those washers because I'm running low on those. Might not be the nicest, but... Hi. It works! But now comes the more problematic part. I will have to remove those uh, spot welded uh, parts from the enclosure in such a way that I don't damage the enclosure itself.
And then the transformer attachments. I, al I also wonder if I could bend them to my will. Maybe with some different pliers. Bend them to my will. All this because I want to fit the main transformer inside of this box. That's the one. So, those uh, attachments are spaced uh, very narrowly, too narrow for what I need. Because the original transformer was a lot smaller. Those pliers were bent the metal to my will just fine. Bend it to my will until it breaks. Now it's already forming a dimple. I won't do it. I won't do it this way. Let the material fatigue uh, do its work and. Try the other one, and again I will bend it to my will. Come on, it's Caritech Electronics, not Caritech Psychotronics. Bloody hell, am I sweating now? Just come on and just do the jump <laughs> for crying out loud. Just do the fucking job. Bend it to my will. The other end as well, but first I'd like to see whether it has any chance of success or if it's just been trolling me. Put those cables in and try to put the enclosure together. I'd rather use this rubber part uh, because it also acts as a distance piece. More tricky than I thought. Electronics pulling shenanigans on me.
now I will just do without this rubber part. And here we've got a gap. But the gap... Uh, I guess it stems from uh, the leftover metal part. That would just go if I removed uh, if I removed those uh, completely. So some more bending metal to my will. I guess that can get covered and I will make a nice new nameplate for it uh, because uh, also the problem is that uh, with the power socket on the back uh, it would be inverted and uh, not looking very nice. So, as I kind of upgrade, I will also make a nameplate uh, to cover this little mishap. But now, got the transformer in place. It's either this way and uh, there's a hundred percent chance it's gonna fit in. But it won't be as nice uh, as I as I thought. Yeah. Or this way. That's what I would love to see because I would be able to use uh, some long M4 screws to attach it uh, to the cover because I would still have to make a few holes for, for attaching the thing it looks like it might have a gap So I guess I will be staying with with the previous design. It also means that uh, I will have to use some uh, angle bars uh, for attaching the, the transformer let's see if i can find anything in my lab Should do the job. So I would have to cut them off a teeny tiny bit. Let's mark how much I have to cut off. Crying out loud. No, 
around those blots. <laughs> That's one. I'm gonna cut it off and then mark another one and cut it off as well. Don't care about this hole. Maybe I should just cut the other one off uh, from the other end. So let me mark it. A piece of wood, uh, a metal saw, and and the part I'm gonna cut, leaving the line on the on the part I want to have, and Use the vice. It's gonna hold the working piece quite nicely. I will use a file to smooth on the edge, but uh, let's do it after cutting. And the vise will do a nice job of holding the piece. Ideally, it should be attached to the bench. And now we are working with files. We're not copying, we're not moving, we're not deleting. Oh, maybe we are moving files. We're not reading and we're not writing them. <laughs> pretty nice, pretty smooth. Time for the other one.
pretty nice. Metal failing all over the place, but when drilling, there's gonna be more. So, time to mark the holes and drill. But how do I mark the holes? And something that long. Here's a little tip for you. If you have a flat ended rod, you can use it for marking the hole. Using a marker on, on the end. Retract it into into the hole. Put the the piece of metal against it. And press the rod against the metal. See? Pretty nice. I think I will be doing the same with uh, with the other piece of metal. And then after I'm done drilling those holes. Oh, by the way, Houston, we've got a problem here. Because this one lets us uh, attach uh, those uh, those metal parts, but uh, in case of this one, I would have to make a cutout. It's just a single piece of metal, but uh, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. Mark down the place where I want that cut out. And I will have to remove something like three millimeters of metal. Like I have marked on the on the piece. And that has to go. Yeah, another problem to be solved. I need to Mark it uh, a little bit farther here. In order to do this, I'll just uh, put it perpendicularly. Oh my goodness, <laughs> then the reels that uh, I had on my bench uh, touched the, the switch on my uh, fume extractor 
and uh, through a small resistance uh, a, a large current uh, flew and uh, then the cardboard uh, piece uh, inside then the real that started to burn <laughs> at least now I know where that smell came from because I was getting a little bit worried Let's try this one. Maybe another file. Uh, this one is meant for a wound. Can it do aluminum? <laughs> Nah, it can't. One moment, please. This is gonna be a noisy job. Not bad. Let's check it. Way better. Time to use the other file to smooth on it.
pretty okay. So, back to marking the hole. And with the vice on the bench, uh, we can draw those holes. Using a automatic center punch. Shows some signs of wear. Nevertheless, a very good tool. And the bear those holes. Find some longish um, for screws. So that it can go through the metal and, uh, and uh, the core and the nut. This should be pretty nice. Even if a little bit risky. I can't put washers on them, but yeah, I think they are gonna be quite nice. So now it's just time to mark uh, another set of holes.
That would be one. That's another one. Marking is done. So it's punch and drill now. It still may not be perfect, but if it's not perfect, I can use a needle file to make the hole where it should be. the deburring stage. And let's see where it takes us. us to the nice place. It fits quite nicely. So it will be time to add the holes to attach the transformer to the base and I'd like to do it uh, a little bit offset from, from those holes so that uh, the bolts uh, don't come in the way. Let's use a, a measure. Six millimeters from the end. Make it 12. Well, from another end. That would be five centimeters between the holes. And here, same thing. And mark them at the center of... If you notice, uh, the edge also takes some space. Let's mark them at 5 millimeters from the outer edge.
That's one. Another one the same. The center punch. A little bit used and acting up. Drilling time. Reaming time. Reaming or debarring. And now it's time to put it together, attach uh, the mounting brackets to the transformer. Let's reuse those vintage nuts. They were originally found on on those uh, threaded rods it comes from another transformer that's one side that's the other Angle bar on the opposite side.
Where is it? Here it is. And since those nuts are quite wide, it's uh, number 8 uh, rather than number 7 you would normally find on uh, M4. So I gotta use a number 8 uh, wrench for those. Oh, just come on, for crying out loud. What's with you? What's your major malfunction, soldier? Got those wrenches handy. A bit tricky. Might be better to do a number 8 socket wrench. Gonna have all kinds of tools for different kinds of jobs. If the socket wrench uh, can actually reach the, the nut and it's having problems with it so I think I will have to do with, uh, with the regular wrenches. And the other side.
yeah. That's the result of wrestling with wrenches. They could have uh, put it on the top side so that if you detach the, the cover you momentarily see what kind of transformer it is. So it's time to cut off the cables. It might also be the time to check with the output socket It's pretty flat and uh, shouldn't be a problem to install it uh, Although it might be a little bit of a problem Which means that uh, I would have to make a little cutout uh, on the main side for the for the diode or oh, I'll just do away with the diode I don't need it <laughs> it would look nice but it's not all that necessary let's get rid of it and make the devices construction a little bit simpler and let's get rid of this one as well. And this one, I will have to make it larger. to accommodate this socket So those two would be the working pins. One more thing that I got from my old lab. <laughs> That's a big one. 40 centimeters. Vernier caliper It's uh, 15 or 16 millimeters So I will have to use uh, a larger Step drill up to twenty. 
Those things do the job real fine. A very useful thing uh, around uh, any workshop that uh, has to drill holes in uh, sheet metal. Especially if you drill holes uh, for tube sockets. But uh, if you do a lot of uh, tube socket uh, hole drilling, you might as well get yourself uh, a punch. I still haven't got one, but I think that uh, if, uh, if things get going here, I will buy myself a 28mm punch for the octal uh, tube sockets. One more. Now I've got to debar it from the inside. Not to be confused with burning from the inside. <laughs> Another fire operation. So, let's take the soldering iron, connect it and identify the, the pins on the socket. Twelve ohms on the heater that was uh, previously connected to the transformer. This would be the heater itself without the magnastat switch and those two those two would be the magnastat uh, switch itself and the case of the heater It's insulated from the rest. I was thinking in lines of uh, connecting the case uh, to the ground. Anyway, time to Attach the socket. Maybe with the notch uh, facing downwards. So that it both looks nice and... Uh, and that I will be able to... Solder the, the wires.
Let's clean the working surface a bit. for a round. Maybe even a pair of wrenches. is not enough and 15 is a little bit too much and I will use a adjustable one. Try 19 on, on the other side it's perfect and hold the socket firmly in place and uh, turn the nut. And the thread got stripped. Yeah, those sockets and Threads, uh, they are nuisance. Meh. So, it will be time to mark the holes for the for the transformer and drill them I'd rather put the connections uh, opposite to, to the side Got a nicer marker for that. This uh, adding 8850 has a long tip. It's designed for marking through a thick layer of metal or wood or some other material so we've got the places where we want to drill the holes so it's Automatic center punch type uh, again. It's kind of 
kind of acting up. So I would like to see the traces here. I would like to make a nape light uh, for, for the station. I better do it uh, while I still can using a little template template response template response <laughs> yeah I think I can use the transformer itself as a template that's uh, the thing I'm gonna store for the time being I won't be doing it but I will design a uh, plate for the, um, the soldering station let's drill those holes And of course the burden. And we're back with a vengeance after some cleanup in the lamp. And I decided to replace uh, those uh, angle bars on the transformer. Putting it putting it like like this and it turns out that I might as well 
use this little LED but uh, attach it here and I even designed uh, a circuit for dual indication of the soldering iron status see <coughs> we've got uh, two diodes and uh, we've got uh, the bidirectional LED one direction is green the other direction is red and the way this little circuit works is that uh, there's a uh, temperature controlled switch named uh, the magnastat that's how Weller named it it's uh, magnetically operated uh, uses the Curie point uh, of some uh, ferromagnetic uh, material placed uh, at the end of the soldering iron's tip. If you see here, number 7, uh, this denotes the temperature. It's uh, somewhat uh, ferromagnetic. And uh, Whenever the soldering uh, tip uh, reaches uh, the cutoff temperature, this one uh, disconnects. And let's see what happens when, uh, when the iron is uh, heating. And then let's see what happens when it's uh, disconnected, when it heats up. When it's heating, We've got uh, one part of the diode connected in parallel with, uh, <coughs> with the heater. There's a uh, current limiting resistor here and a uh, 1N4007 uh, rectifier diode. There's also the 1K uh, plus 1N4007 plus uh, the opposite part of the LED connected here. But it is not gonna work because uh, the, the voltage drop uh, on this diode, uh, there's a higher potential uh, here. And uh, whenever, whenever it cuts off, uh, the other part of the diode uh, will come, will uh, take over. And then the current flowing through this resistor, the, the diode, the LED, and uh, the heater, this being pretty low current and uh, omitted and uh, the heater will be uh, almost a short circuit uh, to the circuit uh, in this branch uh, then the heater resistance uh, is uh, much uh, smaller than one kilo ohm it will be virtually a short circuit which means that uh, then the current uh, will flow through the diode here. And let's do something more practical. Put the diode in the bracket. Again, 
I will have to be careful about this one. Not to damage the transformer. Let's get it up to five millimeter. Now five and a half. And see if it, if the diode holder goes in. Should go in pretty nicely. <coughs> it doesn't happen, so I'd like to use a fire to make this hole just a teeny tiny bit larger. Just a teeny tiny bit larger. I might as well use the Six millimeter drill. And here it comes. Put the nut on it. And then it will just be the matter of soldering some wires to it. I probably should have done it before. some uh, heat shrink tubing as well. Take it out and solder those wires uh, 
without them getting in the way. And the other one. Let's correct the previous one. Heat things up. And this is a non-polarized diode, although I will have to identify the, the green and uh, red uh, LED. Let's put it back in its place. I could have taken it out. And see, it's here. Let's put the thing together. With 
some bolts and nuts and washers. Let's make more knots. Let's make it more washers. Four of them. I always put a washer on both sides of the threaded connection. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to access. So before putting the transformer in, I'd like to do some work uh, on those connections. One of the transformer's uh, windings will go to one contact on uh, the output socket, the other one will go to um, the other contact and I still need to make this uh, double one kilo ohm and uh, one n four double seven trick That should do the job pretty nicely. I might even go with 2K2 and or one and a half kilo. Yeah, for 24 volts, I think one and a half kilo would be perfectly enough. And I can do it dead bug style. None of that printed circuit board rubbish. Make it plain, fast and simple. It doesn't matter which one is which. The only thing that matters is that uh, it has to be cathode to cathode or anode to anode. Oh no! It must be coupled to anode. <laughs> I almost got it wrong on this one. R. So this one will go to the diode, the in the LED. 
I better put some heat shrink tube on the, on those. And I will connect them to the output socket. Just a temporary connection. This will be the proper connection. And now it might be the time to test the soldering iron and test the LED direction. With my testing cable, I like it more than whatever Big Clive has in its lab. <laughs> Not Chinese and wife safer. The old school Vago collectors. And let's test it. The soldering iron is heating. And it will be time to see the polarity on the on the LED. One of them goes here. This will be the red one. And I think this is uh, the good one before it heats up. And it should soon uh, click and indicate that yeah winner winner ah uh, you can't see it you can't see it so it's heating up now it's green and uh, since it doesn't have a filter cap it will be flickering just a little bit now it's heating it's gone red so the thing works like i intended it to
Let's put it all together. The electronic part and... Yeah, I will leave those longish cables. This will be connected here. A piece of heat shrink tube. be posting this little weather indicator on Hackaday. Simple enough. Let's put the iron back, uh, clean the, the workspace and put the transformer in its place. Disconnect the, the mains winding. So it's time to put it together. Looks like this is getting in the way. I might have to <coughs> change those connections after all. And I of, of course I need to remember about the ground connection. be best if I just connect those cables first but then I think that it will be best to remove the main socket first so that the transformer can be moved back uh, just a teeny tiny bit Let's get a thinner one.
strip the wires and and yeah. One of them goes here. Maybe just strip it just a little bit longer. Time to maneuver the thing. Maybe it's better to do it uh, from this side. Solder it. Pretty nice. Then the other wire with an additional little complication that I need a ground wire for that. Or I will just use. Uh, not a ground wire, but a large uh, resistor, like 100k between uh, the between the soldering iron step uh, and the ground, 
And that uh, is because <coughs> if by any chance uh, I touch uh, something on a high potential, it won't uh, create a um, dead short uh, to the ground, which would be dangerous, but uh, a uh, high impedance path While protecting against the uh, electrostatic discharge, so I'd rather have the 100 kilo ohms uh, resistors in, in, in line, just like I have with the Solomon station. It's a nice compromise. for some maneuvering. Might even cut this cable just a teeny tiny bit shorter. something to push the cable from below and from the side Cable is soldered and the resistor will be there soon. And the LED cable goes to the third contact. The resistor will go here. Let's form a nice log. Look for a nice screw for this job. I think I had some short screw here. This one. 
the washer. Connecting the resistor. That's an okay jobby. And it's time to put those parts together. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. That's one. Let's use the magic of forceps to drive the nut in the place. Clamp it. This tool is so universal, I can't recommend it enough. It, uh, it virtually changed uh, the way I do electronics. The way I assemble things. Oh my goodness, things are starting to escape. Maybe I should just start with the opposite side where things are more accessible. And then moving on to the hard part. Here I could even reach the things with my fingers if I wanted.
that's gonna be a little bit tricky so see you after I'm done I'll do it off the camera okay so after I don't know how much uh, effort uh, I got this transformer attached to the enclosure let's take care of the further part doing the mains connections those cables go to the main switch that will be put right here and of course I will have to remember about the heat shrink tube let's use this one I always insulate all the mains connections that's how you do it with uh, circuits with dangerous voltages running around some neutral, some live this is a double pole single throw switch the original one found on the spur supply I will be reusing it Shrink them tubes. Oh, mm, this is not elegant. I will have to correct this. Not fully soldered. Any sticking wires, if I spot them, I will cut them. Yeah, if I spot them, I will cut them. <laughs>
Oh, come on, really? No, it won't go. Come on. Uh, there's gotta be a way. Now, where's the nut that I had on the other side? Gotta find it and got the fuse holder. Where was the switch not? Maybe I will need to find another one. But I'd rather have the original. Oh, I could bet my ass that it's just somewhere just staring at me and gloating. Nasty little part. Anyway, let's move on to the fuse holder. Oh, come on. Oh, for crying out loud. Yeah, that's how you do it. Touching the knot. Seriously, where could I put that nasty little stupidity? Let's get some long nice plier to screw it on firmly. That's gonna do the jobby. Cut the live one down to what I need.
put the wire through the lug. Did I put my tweezers back in the box when I used them? Yes, I did. I need those tweezers, come on. Let's bring some of that solder to the end. Heat shrink tube. Doesn't look like this knot fell down somewhere. That's starting to drive me nuts. And the power socket. So let's attach it. This is the live, this is the neutral.
And of course there's the protective earth. How can I forget about the protective earth? And shrink the last ones. It's time to attach the socket. And the last thing would be the ground connection.
let's do it from the side and uh, use a locking nut uh, on the opposite side. So, that about should do it, uh, apart from this. Looks like I will have to look for a replacement. Chances are that I'll find one somewhere here. Yeah. That one's gonna be okay. Pretty cute. Like this whole power supply is pretty cute and and small. Time to put it together.
And that would be it. The soldering iron power supply. Time to plug it in and test it. It's flickering red. I can't see it with my eye because of persistence of vision. But we can see it on the camera. Starting to merge solder. It's already hot. <laughs> Pretty nice. I also added a control on the iron itself. It only lights up when it's heating. Now it's hot. It's green. It's heating again, it's red. Loveliness. Quite a practical little device that I just built using scrap electronics. <laughs> it might be something like uh, one and a half or two kilos, but uh, it's pretty practical. And even I, I would even say it's pretty compact. So, back to the desk. This project took a lot of time. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, the first proper project this year. I, I rather shot one and I wanted to do it for a long time. For a year or something like that. Uh, ever since I got this iron. And uh, it's generally gonna be used uh, as a backup uh, iron because I've got the Solomon SL20 soldering station uh, as my uh, main uh, soldering instrument. Um, but uh, I should be able to get um, a lot of uh, types of uh, of tips uh, for the weller iron the only drawback is that uh, those weller irons uh, have the temperature preset in the tip itself it's not um, temperature controlled like a typical uh, soldering station and there's no uh, there's no adjustment on the station. It's uh, it's hardwired. Might not be as handy for 
for all those uh, applications where I need uh, some uh, heavy duty soldering works like uh, like the ground buses and tube amplifiers but uh, this should be this should be a pretty nice one see you next time working on the dirty dozen amp bye